The mobile counterweighted jib anchorage system provides an overhead anchor point for active fall protection. The jib boom features built-in 360-degree rotation with 22.5-degree locking increments to service a wide working area. Periscoping rotation handle allows you to manually rotate the mast and help pivot the jib into place. The system's height can be adjusted with a forklift or an overhead crane using the lifting pockets found on the jib boom. The portable counterweight base weighs approximately 2,700 pounds before it is filled with concrete on site. The counterweight box must be completely filled with 4,000 PSI concrete prior to use. Once filled, the base weighs approximately 7,800 pounds. Anchor points are found on all four corners of the base of the system to allow safe and convenient transportation with a crane or forklift. Inspecting the system prior to use, including harnesses and SRLs. Before each use, inspect the system thoroughly. Keep an eye open for any damaged parts. Look for cracks, dents, or deformities. Check all components and hardware to be sure they are secure and functioning properly. Ensure there are not any missing or broken parts. Look for signs of corrosion. Inspect the labels to make sure they are present and legible. If they are damaged or missing, contact Capital Safety to order new ones. All fall arrest equipment needs to be properly maintained to ensure it has not been subjected to a fall or damaged in any way. Check all your components before each use and have an annual inspection performed by a competent person. First, inspect the full body harness. Be sure all the hardware is free of cracks, burrs or corrosion, and all the working parts move freely, including the buckles and snap hooks. Be sure that all the plastic pads and keepers are in place and free of cuts or cracks. The webbing should be free of any cuts, frayed, or broken fibers. Check for tears, abrasions, burns, or discoloration. All the stitching should be intact. Check for pulled or cut stitches. Broken stitches may indicate that the harness has been impact loaded and must be removed from service. Inspect all the labels to see that they are present and fully legible. If not, they should be replaced. Next, inspect the SRL. The SRL housing must not have loose fasteners or bent, cracked, distorted, worn, or damaged parts. Pull out the lifeline several feet and allow it to retract back into the housing. Do not use the unit if the lifeline does not retract. Look for broken wires, kinks, frays, or worn areas. If you're using a web SRL, look for loose, broken, or damaged stitching. Look for cuts, burns, or soiled webbing. Do not use the unit if the inspection reveals any of these flaws. Test the braking mechanism by grasping the lifeline above the snap hook load indicator, giving it several sharp pulls downward. This will engage the locking brake. A reliable SRL will not slip when the brake is engaged. Once the lifeline tension is released, the brake will disengage and the lifeline will retract back into the SRL housing. Do not use the SRL if the brakes do not engage. Check the snap hook to be sure that it operates freely, locks, and the swivel operates smoothly. Look for signs of damage like bent, cracked, or distorted components. The snap hook load indicator will elongate and expose a red area when it has been subjected to a fall. Do not use the unit if the load impact indicator has been activated. This means it should not be read. Finally, ensure the carabiner and the SRL attachment is free of defects and provides a safe and reliable connecting point. If any of these inspections reveal an unsafe or defective condition, the unit must be removed from service and promptly destroyed unless it can be returned to Capital Safety for repair and recertification. Once you have concluded the inspection, record the results in your product's inspection and maintenance log. Positioning the system with a forklift or crane. Proper rigging techniques should be applied when moving the system with an overhead crane. The crane should have the capacity to lift 10,000 pounds. Use all four points from a basket sling. Adjusting the anchorage height. The system's overall lowered height is 19 feet. The system can be adjusted in height in six inch increments from 16 feet to 20 feet of anchorage height. To raise the jib boom with the forklift, first remove the hitch pin. Carefully place one fork inside the lifting pocket and gently begin raising the system. Place the hitch pin back into the adjustment hole when the appropriate height is reached. Defining the safe working area. This system is equipped with anchor points to increase the available working radius. 
It is recommended that the worker maintains a 6 foot or 30 degree maximum working radius from the active anchor point. If multiple anchor points are supplied, the user must maintain 100% tie off when switching between anchor points. Failure to keep within the safe working radius could result in a potentially dangerous swing fall hazard. A swing fall occurs when the anchorage point is not directly above the point where a fall occurs. The resulting fall causes the worker to swing like a pendulum, causing him to strike an object or machinery in his path. This type of fall can be potentially fatal. You can minimize swing falls by working as close to the anchorage point as possible. You can further minimize the risk by using a self-retracting lifeline or other variable length connecting subsystem that prevents workers from stepping out of the safe working area and reaching the edge of the working platform. Using the trolley and SRL. All users must read and understand the warning label prior to using the system. The system is rated for one user along any length of the rail at any given time. Do not exceed the maximum number of users rating. As part of a fall protection work plan, considerations should be made for rescue in the event a worker does actually fall and is left suspended. As per the OSHA standard 1926.502 D20, the employer shall provide a prompt rescue of employees. Plan ahead. Don't wait until it happens. Provide prompt rescue per OSHA standard 1926.502 D20. You cannot rely on 911 for rescue in all cases. Suspension trauma straps and similar devices can help allow the victim to be capable of being safe while waiting for rescue. Self-rescue is the best. Plan ahead, using restraints or self-rescue type products if possible, like RSQ. Make it simple. Use ladders, man lifts, or other available equipment to rescue victim. RPD or Rogueless R350 or R500 type units are effective in rescue operations. Pick-off type rescues should be the last resort, difficult to perform and time-consuming, and it puts the victim in rescue at harm.